as Ewing. we get into the game with the Jarvan ban straight away. Jarvan and Olaf banned out of this one as we take a quick look at the lineups we are seeing right here. That University of Sydney team lineup. I mean, so many good players across the board. Zarnos in top, Udisov in the jungle. That's right, he's that guy who, you know, he had some, some world success in the past. Uh, Resand in mid lane. He, I'm pretty sure I've seen him in OCS before as well. Uh, saves in the AD carry position and forward on support. Yeah, I, I definitely think that top half of the map for Usid is going to be where to, what you need to keep an eye on, as potentially that could be where they win the game. Yeah, but on the other side, QUT, Tron the Palm mm -hmm. up in top, Janet in the jungle, Little Simo in the mid lane, AZ on AD carry, and Entropic yeah. making a return appearance from last year on that support position. And I see Entropic. I was super impressed last time I saw him in games and on stream. I think QUT, you know, get a good engaged support, and that could be where they fight back in this. Yeah, no, last tournament, Entropic played pretty well, so I'm actually excited to see what happens today. Um, I wonder how... QT is going to be able to counteract the experience factor of Usid, like you mentioned earlier. Um, I wonder if they're just going to go for a, if they're going for comfort picks, maybe, mm -hmm. or if they're just going to go straight counter as we get into the first pick here. Yes, where will that priority be? The now? Orn is available. Orn is available, but is that really what Tricky Ricky wants to go for? Nope, he's going to be looking at AMF and say, well, that's the least tricky pick of them all. No. I, I, I mean, okay. It's a good champion, to be it's fair. Very good. Very MF good. is one of those top three, top four ADCs right now. Probably in the top two. Probably top two, yeah. She's up there with Aphelios, mm -hmm. I'd say. Aphelios, and then MF is up there. Um, and to be fair, Orn isn't as strong as he has been in previous patches with some of the nerfs. However, still strong enough. <laughs> yeah, and Yumi also very, very powerful right now. Mm. So those are just two power picks. We'll worry about synergies later. We're just going to go ahead and get the best champions available for us at this stage. Yeah. So one Orn, one Yumi locked in. I mean, you have that MF, and all you now need is... Well, you don't have the Jarvan, because you banned that away. So that's yeah. your own fault, Sydney. But you can go for pretty much... Any, any sort of any form sort of lockdown. Of, I think they could go for just a hard engage support bot lane. Oh, never mind. Oh, that could be the top lane to counter flexed. the Orn, to be fair. That's flexed. We don't know. It's going to be top. I think that the Yumi could be partnered really well with a um, Ezreal. With an Ezreal yeah. Because if if the Misfortune decides to bullet time, just E, the, all e out of that and just start deleting from the sidelines. So I think that's definitely going to be a good pick, especially with an Orn. Uh, you can really confirm some uh, some ulties. Oh, a Cassiopeia. Rasand, I've seen... I have cast games of mm -hmm. Rasand playing Cassiopeia before. He is very strong on this champion, so I'm very happy to see that one get locked in. And Cassiopeias are always fun to see, but there is that Ezreal. Great Ezreal. synergy with the kitty cat, because Ezreal is totally a cat person. Can't land a date. Buy a bunch of cats. That's what you do, and that's Ezreal special. Yeah, Ezreal is one of those champions who is up there in the top four. I think he's about third ranked, I would probably say, just below MF. So I really like the pick, especially into the comp where you've got the the hard sort of lockdown of the Cassiopeia. It could be really helpful just being able to, you know, keep kiting around. Don't let the Cassiopeia get those poison procs. It will be uh, important to see the Cass land Ws, mm -hmm. as that'll lock him down. Yep. Yeah, the Miasma is going to be very critical. I mean, Rasand, I trust on that champion, as we're going to see Mordekaiser band away. And I find that interesting right now for QUT. I mean, they're quite aware Orn's probably going to be on the weak side, so they're going to get rid of some of those champions. Perhaps I could punish him. But yeah. again, I kind of suspect that the Janna is going to be going to the top. So I'm not too hyped on that Mordekaiser band. On the other side, Yasuo being taken away. I mean, you know what? Any game without a Yasuo. I know you wanted to see Yasuo on Zed and Talon. I did want to see. Well, you know what? I don't. And so I'm I'm happy with University of Sydney. Get rid of I, I don't want Yasuo in any game. I'm hey, very picky. We, we still have the Z. The Z is still available. No. Uh, the okay. Rek'Sai ban. Rek'Sai, one of those really strong junglers. At any point, really, mm -hmm. hasn't really had a a point of weakness. Mm. Uh, there was like a few patches last year where the numbers were just so far in the ground that Rek'Sai couldn't do anything. But since then, Rek'Sai has been an extremely potent and an extremely valuable jungler so i wonder what picks qt and you are going to take uh to counteract that yeah very curious as well so we have actually seen rex side now banned two games in a row at this yeah. stage and that's a bit of a surprise to me um only because, yeah, Rek'Sai, I recognize Rek'Sai is very, very strong. I consider Rek'Sai a top four jungle, but yeah. I wouldn't really put her above the likes of the Olaf of the Jarvan. Although Olaf yeah. and Jarvan were banned as well, so yeah. So here we are. I guess you're going, you're, you're picking the barrel for people, and Rek'Sai is a pretty safe pick in that sense. 
Uh, as we get the Oriana picked up, again, this team comp by QT is looking very wombo combo-y. Uh, they need that ball delivery system. Yeah, they need like a... What can they go bot lane? I mean, Lee Sin. Oh, they they, oh sorry, that's their jungler left. Yeah, they could go a Lee Sin. Um, it's, no, sets banned. Uh, I was going to say, they could take Nocturne, but you should take the Nocturne away, which is really smart, mm -hmm. because that's the last thing you want is an invisible, like a, a Darkness Nocturne into a... You know, into an Ori or, uh, orb. It does mean that the University of Sydney, though, might be lacking that real front line. I mean, you still have yeah. Nautilus, you still have Leon available, you still have Zach. That's, oh? that's a top lane Nocturne, I'm pretty sure. It could be a top lane Casio as well. At a or mid a mid Nocturne. Noct yeah, there's a lot of options right here. The Zach is being hovered. It will get locked in. So it will be a Janus support. Unless there's something really crazy it going could be on right now. Zach support. Tricky Ricky. Yeah, tricky you never Ricky know what he's going to pull out. You never and know what he's going to There's that Lee Sin you talked yeah. about. That, you're, yeah. Yeah. No, that was to be expected. Sense. They needed a ball delivery system. They've got one now. So QUT's team is rather nasty. Yeah, QUT's team, I mean, it makes sense. It's a pretty standard team composition considering the direction that these bands went. They're playing the meta, they're playing the smart game. Sydney, on the other hand, As I. Four, have... just four champions that we did not expect. Zach, to be fair, is pretty meta right now. He's yeah. very strong, but I didn't expect to see a Nocturne. Oh, sorry, it's a Zach top. Yep. They just switched. Yep. All so right, it is go. a Zach into Orn. Interesting. Oh, boy. Yeah, okay, you know what? Oh. No, okay, that okay. makes There we go. That makes No, sense. they switched back. Oh, I was excited yeah, for because, a second. Yeah, because, I mean, Nocturne, his kit is very well positioned against Orns. Oh, yeah, his kit is incredibly good. Um, he can deny the Brittle, I believe, if mm -hmm. he's able to, you know, time the time his uh, spell shield against the W. Even so, stopping the knock-up is still valuable um, if I'm, that happens. So Yeah, I mean, well, that's just it. Like, an Orn can't engage on a Nocturne because if yep. he goes in, all it Nocturne, all it Zornos has to do here is push W, Spell Shield, all right, knock e. back, drop your fear. Orn has already used his lunge ability, so he's not going to be able to get out of it, and you win every single trade. Yeah, and the other threat there is because of that, uh, Zach can have really easy ganks. If you've gone in for fights, you're just going to get ganked repetitively. Mm -hmm. So it puts Orn in a position where he just has to sit there and farm, hopefully under tower for him, yeah. because if he doesn't, then it's going to put him in a really awkward spot where he can just get and, camped. And that is could be the one potential weakness of this Nocturne yeah. pick, because Nocturne doesn't have the best escape ability in the world. No. And yes, early game, if it was just in lane alone, Nocturne versus Orn, yeah, all right, yeah, yeah. I'm leading on that. But you are up against a Lee Sin jungle. Lee yeah. Sin's can be aggressive; they can invade, especially against a Zac, whose clear isn't necessarily the fastest. It's going to be risky, and it's going to be super important for this University of Sydney side to track that Lee Sin. Yeah, make sure they play strong on the opposite side of the map, and really play around the Lee Sin's positioning as much as possible. Yeah, I definitely think that the problem we're going to see, and this, if this comes up, it'll really expose that like that weakness is that they have a very good that that nocturne is very good at getting in mm -hmm. if that fight turns sour <laughs> that nocturne has no way out and just has to commit mm -hmm. so i'm hoping that if it if they go in they can stay in uh because otherwise that nocturne's gonna well, have I mean, a, look at the team comp though like they're yeah. built to go in you get the elastic slingshot with you know, oh yeah the um darkness of nocturne the, the only thing they need is the old zach ulti where he just go into a puddle and bring everyone under tower. Ah, uh, no, that, no, it's a, the, the the proper old Zach ulti, aka the, the current old, one. old Zach ulti. Yeah, the, the, the current new one. ulti. It's that's the key one. That's, that's the one the I one. remember. Um, when I main Zach for majority, that's it was old Zach, and it was beautiful. I I remember when Twitch was still had Ratatat Tat as his ulti. I still call it Ratatat Tat. They should have never changed. They the should have uh, petitioned to change free the rat, change it back to Ratatat Tat. <laughs> yeah, free the rat. Change it back to rat -a -tat -tat. That's the rat we're talking That's about That's the rat here. we're talking about. Exactly. Anyways, we'll be going on to the rift momentarily in this one. So after those picks and bans, I'm going to give you a chance right now. You can yep. change your pick. You can come back and join uh, this university. It's tempting. I'm not going to lie. Their, pi their team is very good. But I'm going to represent. I've got, I've got to admit that I think that QT has a better team fight. I'm going to be honest. And I think that in these sort of games... If they can get those team fights over objectives, I think that they can scale ahead and take advantage of what experience advantage you said might have. There's one ability though that I think actually gives the team fights in favor of the University of Sydney. 
and that is one petrifying gaze from one of the best Cassiopeias in the region. Yeah. Uh, so that is kind of where I feel like, uh, oh, QUT might be in trouble. That said, the Rasan's opting for the heal in mid, so maybe a little bit more defensive right there, but it does have the phase rush, and I love seeing that. So even with the speed boost off of a heal, actually, like that's going to be a very, very scary Cassiopeia. Yeah, two things to keep note of, which was interesting, is you've got the Ezreal with lethal tempo instead of one of the other runes that usually they may take mm -hmm. and the other option the other interesting point is that the oriana has unsealed spellbook mm. which is a nice one maybe take dropping a little bit of that damage potential with the execute and stuff for the utility of the yep the the utility of the unsealed spellbook being able to tp into fights get that ignite get those heals get those barriers get those exhausts uh, so I think we're going to see a lot more utility Oriana this game, potentially even going some more. I mean, Oriana typically is taken as a utility yeah. in that mid lane, and I mean the ball delivery system's there with the Lee Sin, but it's yeah. I'm still nervous though because you're going ball delivery system against a Janna, against a Zac. Like you have yeah. tools in order to stop it mid jump in. Yeah, and that does have me a bit worried for this QUT side. Like I don't know. I feel yeah. they're going to have to find these perfect engages, find these perfect fights. Yes, if they execute um, everything correctly, then 100% QUT can run away with this game. And I mean, I was wrong in game number one. I can yeah. be wrong again. I'm not afraid to admit it. But I just feel, considering the play style typically seen from these players, considering the team that they got, there's a lot of comfort picks right now yeah. on this blue side. Even in team fights, even if things go badly at first, I could see them bouncing it back around, and that's the strength of that Janna support. Yeah, uh, look, we've seen we've seen how strong Janna support can be already. Uh, I think we're going to see hopefully again the strength that that brings. Another thing to keep in mind in those team fights is that is that the Nocturne, if the ball is on the way, and Nocturne can just pop that ult, and then they just have no way of seeing where to go in, what's happening, anything. So they either have to commit blindly to the fight or have to leave knocked, uh, leave Lee Sin alone mm. inside the uh, inside the enemy team with no yeah, way to that, escape. That's not a good time. No. So if they can get that timing right, that's going to be really, really good. Well, here's the good thing about those situations. Mm -hmm. He's blind anyway, so he doesn't know that's that all true. his friends have abandoned him. That's true. So, you, so you can't really betray someone if they don't know they've been betrayed. That's true. They're just like, go in. We can't see We've anyone. got your back. Trust us trust us and he doesn't know he doesn't was. know he doesn't know that they can't see yeah. so um i guess that that is beneficial the the blind monk can't be double blinded yeah actually you can technically be like triple blinded but yeah know. i mean ooh, that's a lot of blindage that's a lot of blindness you only have two eyes so like how can he be triple his third eye yeah the third eye too. the third eye oh god for a monk like him that's uh that's not what you want to see no not at all as unfortunately we have a bit of a pause we'll be getting back into this game as soon as possible i do apologize for this one we saw a hint of summer's rift but now we're back to us we're back beautiful faces i do believe we will be getting on shortly however hopefully uh, hopefully hopefully i mean if not you know we can simulate we the can, game we can i can like you know draw little stick figures fighting and you can draw your stick figure fighting oh, or we can out. watch the proper game sorry everybody stick fight lol arena will be put on postpone until a later date but we are in the game. There were no level 1 shenanigans that we missed. And you know what? Normally, I love level 1 shenanigans. But if we're not going to see them, that's A-OK. -okay. In that case, let's just skip that first boring two minutes. No one no one cares. No, no one. Ha nothing happens in the first two minutes that is, you know, advantageous to a game. Mm. Um, but yeah, we see there the Unsealed Spellbook. We've got the... The Nocturne looking to potentially make a play getting, there. No, he was just dropping that vision, aware of the potential of a level 2 gank on that top side. That's actually a very smart ward, and yeah. does spot out Janet. So, Zornos, you know, aware of this lane, aware of the matchups, very smart play right there. And this is why I'm worried about QUT, because already we're seeing University of Sydney. They recognize, okay, we have a good matchup. We just have to make sure Lee Sin doesn't get the jump on us. Well, Recursive Martian... Recursive... Yeah. Defensive motions have already been put in place. Preemptive measures. I Preemptive think measures. Yeah, there we go. Has already been put in place. Precursive measures. Um, yeah, so the, the ward was really, uh, really good by Nocturne to know that that's a potential route for the Lee Sin to take for that early gank. So really smart to shut that down. Um, means that he could play a little bit more aggressive uh, onto the Orn or even just freeze it under his tower if it need be. And know that there's no real threat of the Lee Sin without him knowing that there's a threat. A freeze actually here would be super good. You can see the Ooh, pings coming yeah. down already, and one Udisoft is making his way to the top on the other side as well. Saves and forward. They're tracking Janet so well. Nice step up, gets that vision cone. And like, this is what I mean. They have to track 
their enemy, and the gank did happen up top. It didn't actually result in anything except for a very low health orn, just taking a look at the side right there. Mm. And I mean, this is smart play. Ruby Crystal. Yes. Yeah, the classic. Mm. If you get low on orn, just buy a Ruby Crystal. But the point I'm making though is University of Sydney. They track the jungle. They're yeah. playing the opposite oh. sides as, oh, ooh, a little bit of a issue perhaps as Sumo. He's still in the game though. I can see him moving. That was a lie. That, they lied to us. Um, but yeah, really good job by Yusid to track the jungler there, knowing that Janet has the potential to really throw this game out of whack. Uh, so if they're able to keep uh, keep tabs on where that Lee Sin is, it's going to make their life a lot easier, as we see the Orn now forced to farm under tower. Yep, and already it's going to be a quick recall for Zarnos at this stage. He doesn't have that much CS, but he'll be able to buy something nice in order to push that advantage. He'll also refill those corrupting potions, and he is not going to bother with the teleport. No. Oh, it's going to be risky, actually, but he's going to try and run it in this instance as Tron is going to go ahead and stay in lane. Meanwhile, mid lane, Janet actually taking a look for Rysand at this stage. I mean, Wave will start to push, so could be an opportunity right here for Janet. Rysand, though, does have the vision, I believe, so should be somewhat aware, but it's still going towards that bush. There could be an opening. A lot of minions, though, so it will be a little bit risky. Here comes Janet. It's going to go ahead, use the ward to jump to him. Q still available. It's a lot of damage. Rysand does get back underneath the tower, holds onto Flash and heal and escapes. Yeah, unfortunately for Janet there, there was that moment of hesitation that studded out of the bush, went back in, and gave uh, Ray saying that moment of being able to get that character turned around and getting away. Uh, if he'd gone in a little earlier, they might have actually got that extra damage down and got the kill, but either way, um, good to see at least the initiative being taken by the Lee Sin trying to make those plays, putting pressure on the mid lane. Mm -hmm. um, I do want to see a little bit more on the top side, if I'm going to be honest, especially from Lee Sin, uh, knowing that the one is being going to be shoved under tower pretty hard constantly. So if they can get the advantage, and we have a potential dragon being taken currently. Yeah, Udisov's going to go ahead and start this dragon. I'm aware that after that gank, Janna is most likely going to back. So he could have beeline straight for it. They have the bot and the mid priority. And this will be a great dragon procure, like secured for University of Sydney, who I am just super impressed with this early game at this stage. Like They seem to be doing everything almost correctly. They survived that gank in mid lane. They turn it around, push in their, their advantage, got that first Cloud Drake, and Infernal is next, which means we're going to have a Mountain Soul because all the dragons are just going to be the same throughout the entirety of this tournament. And, like, that's just how the game of League of Legends is played. Yeah, we're going to go Cloud into Mountain, into, cloud sorry, into Cloud into Infernal into, into Mountain. Every single time. Uh, it is something to take note of, is that there is about a 3k gold difference just from CSing alone on the side of Usid. Um... Oh, it's just dropped back. Actually, they're catching up. For a moment, it was oh. it was about 3k. I think that's 300, not 3k. Oh, sorry, 300. Yeah, I was about to say that. A 3k gold of virtual be no, quite no. huge. Kind of like this gank, oh. actually. Right, Sand already taken quite low. Jan is still on the hunt. Flash still available for this Cassiopeia, and it will be held on to. Talk about knowing your champion's limits. Yeah, definitely knowing that... Uh what that champion could do. You are correct. It was 300. If there was a 3,000 gold difference, there would be a big problem currently. <laughs> so much better that it's a 300. Otherwise, this game is doomed if they're at a 3K gold difference at six minutes, six minutes and 29 seconds. Yeah, so, oh, that would have been... Ooh. Oh, God. Um, is that, that's not even possible. Oh, oh it's possible. Uh, I've, I guess, I've seen some things, I guess man. if they got a pentakill level one or Journey something. Journey down to the iron to, to platinum tournaments oh, in Jesus. the amateur scene. Oh, you see God. some things. We Yeah, you do you see, see some, some things. Things. <laughs> things you can never really unsee. Mm. I think just get a gank plank with a pentakill barrel and you might get that gold. Yeah, that could do it. Or like a pike somehow. Or just a pike. Like or just a pike. Getting very early level six and just, just dunk, 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 dunk on everyone just a constantly. Pike. That, that's all I'm going to say. Just a pike. As we are back onto the rift, so it was a quick pause, but everything seems to have shaped up quite nicely. Little Sumo going to go ahead and push in. And interesting that Zeranos actually had to back. Flash was used. I'm curious what happened in the top side of the map. Yeah, we didn't exactly see what happened there. I'm guessing that Orn just was able to get a really nice engage on without... Zornos being able to, you know, spell shield it or whatever. And the, the brittle damage is nothing to scoff at. Uh, uh, yeah, even a weak on with with that damage can do some damage. Oh, oh, wow, okay. The gank. Gank was successful in mid lane. Udisoft setting up Rice and then gets that first blood over to the University of Sydney. And that's going to be really big. Getting that Cassiopeia kills early on. You can already see a near 20, uh, 20 CS difference in the mid lane. If you can get that, uh, that Cassio really far ahead 
uh, early on, it's going to be really rough because, like you said, that Petrifying Gaze is a game-changing ultimate, and if you can get that character doing a million damage off mm. of it, then that's going to be brutal. Also, yes, we didn't catch it on camera, but I can pretty much tell you exactly what happened, mm -hmm. considering the fact that the little sumo still has flash up. Uh, Udisoft went from that jungle right below, hit the elastic slingshot, the miasma was dropped onto little sumo, and there was no chance to flash out and escape, and boom, bam, boom. First blood going over to Rice Hand. Like we all yep. know what the play is. We all there was a Zach and in <laughs> involved, so we know what happened. Zach went into the lane and they died. So absolutely, as yes. um, kill was secured for Rice Hand. I do believe Petrifying Gaze actually would have been. Oh no, it was used before that right? I'm guessing it was used to lock even for the slow. Yeah, you can see it was on cooldown right there. So yeah, it was it's on it's on cooldown. My guess was it was used probably for the slow, mm -hmm. um, because it would be very bizarre. If they were caught out by the ultimate straight away. Ooh, as we wants more. That said, AZ already has one kill, but there could be a place to turn it around. Although, Janna and Zach doesn't do the most damage. The passive will be popped after a nice kick from Janet, and AZ is actually looking to secure the kill. A big monsoon, though, is possibly going to keep the Zach alive, and it will. Udisoft will walk out. Janet also limping out of that fight. Is going to go ahead and try and recall. Entropic still trying to throw down some damage with the help of AZ. Up top, a solo kill for Tron the Palm, and you know what? We may have gotten this top lane completely wrong. Yeah, we may have just completely got what we thought wrong. And Orn is just, you know, he was playing a little passively earlier, and now all of a sudden he's gone, okay, well, you know, let, let's fight. You know, you want to fight me? Okay, let's do it. We saw earlier a little bit of that when uh, when Nocturne went in and eat him, but wasn't able to get any damage off. Meanwhile, Orn had hit him with a W auto Q and done half his HP. Unfortunately for... <laughs> For QUT there, Ezreal forgot that, you know, Zach blob uh, Blobules doesn't... Blobicules? That's the one. Bloblets don't actually get hit by his W. So, um, kind of kind of well, wasted a bit of damage there that could have been used onto the onto the piece. But, you know what? Good ultimate by, uh, by Janna to keep that alive and really just capitalize on what could have been a really bad engage. I kind of just want to call him Bloops. Zach's little bloops. Zach's. Are they, is it one Zach or are there technically four little Zachs? Um, four little Zachs. Four That's little Zachs. Four okay. mini Zachs. Like, have you ever seen um Army of Darkness? No. Ah, uh, it's a good movie. Zach okay. is the powerhouse of the cell. Fair enough. Exactly. As he's going to go ahead and get himself a Rift Herald, actually. So yeah. you know. Gets himself a third eye in this instance, and that's one more eye than one Lee Sin, or actually three more, as he's going to be looking to possibly drop that a bit deeper right now. More pressure going to be put on this mid lane. Little Sumo is going to have to be careful. The slingshot is charged. It does connect. Rasan's going to step forward, drops the Miasma. However, it doesn't hit one Little Sumo, and Janet is here for the counter kick, looking for that big dragon kick. Not going to find it, but however, the shockwave does find Rasan, forces out the flash. Janet's low. He was trying to re engage on that ward. The elastic slingshot goes kabloosh. Takes Janet out. You have Zornos making his way towards the top side. He does have his ultimate available, and we could be seeing that Nocturne dive. Forward is on the flank in case any retreat attempt is made. The eye gets put down, but University of Sydney doesn't look like they're going to pull the trigger here. Yeah, no, that doesn't. Then it doesn't look like they're going to. But again, oh, Zach, I actually know they are. They are. The Slingshot's not going to connect, but that doesn't matter. The damage from Zornos is going to be far too much, and the kill will be secured. Tower aggro was on Udisoft, so Zornos can continue to wail on this tower. Yes, Harold goes down, but that's four, maybe five plates going to the Sydney side. Yeah, and that's really big as we see the gold lead is just slowly, slowly increasing. The really good fight, unfortunate for Janet there, just got absolutely chunked out by the combination of Zach Cassiopeia. Uh, again, we saw Cassiopeia use the ulti for the slow, wasn't able to get the lockdown, unfortunately. But even that slow in damage is enough to, you know, it's not nothing to scoff at. So, a uh, really good fight. They end up getting three kills? Uh, or oh, two kills. Two kills, two kills there. Uh, that's right, they got the other kill yep. top. Yeah, mid. Uh, so they get two kills there and about, what was it, four tower plates? Mm -hmm. a lot four of and a half plates. Enough gold to keep them in the lead. Yeah, enough gold to really accentuate their lead and, you know, put them in a very safe spot. So I think they're in a really good spot. Although QT and Usid have equal, you know, equal kills, mm -hmm. I definitely think Usid is in a better position. Yeah, they are at the moment. That said, it could switch back at any stage. AZ is no laughing matter at this stage. The Mana Moon already completed on one Ezreal, and it's 
something that if you are a fan of the University of Sydney or even attended, you need to be a little bit wary of. Uh, forward and saves, you know, not having the best time in this lane, although saves has been doing a good job farming. And Sydney did get the first dragon, so it's not all doom and gloom, but this next dragon might actually be contested or even go to the QUT side. Yeah, and we see here we have the Infernal Drake coming up, so history repeating itself. We've got Yudsoff. Uh, oh. We've got him off at the side, potentially going for a steal. Yep, here Zach, it goes. notorious for a steal. Or an Slingshot, engage. Slingshot, going to go in. Unfortunately, it goes right down the middle. So the final chapter is used, but it's not used in time to save Janet, who is already down. Teleport from Tron the Palm. He's going to blow that Ornhorn, but he immediately gets petrified, and he will go down after the bullet time from one saves. QUT, they're grouped as three. The Slingshot somehow misses, and the Shockwave throws the rest of Sydney back. I hear comes Zoranos on the flank. His target will be one little sumo. He will get the fear. He will be slowed by the rain, and Zoranos will secure that kill that's two going to the side of the University of Sydney and they'll get that dragon at the end of it technically three just you know, came back up they just came back up yeah that's that's really strong good for usage right now as they capitalize and get that infernal Drake uh, we're getting a repeat of last time oh we didn't get mountain Drake no, no uh, game right. over look <laughs> Game's bugged. We're supposed to get Mountain. We're That's the rule. We, we, we told we told the crew to get Mountain on this round, mm. but um, you know, I don't think they got the memo, unfortunately. What a petrifying gaze though from Sam. Oh yeah, really shutting down that one. It was a good ulti uh, from Little Sumo, but just not enough to actually, you know, turn the fight turn the fight around. Uh, so much damage coming out of everyone on Usid right now. Um, I think that yeah, we, this is a sign of what's going to come, mm. unfortunately, for this team. As we saw, Orn wasn't able to get. Uh, sorry. Born not doing as well as we predicted. We thought that top lane was going to be switched around completely, but uh, you know he's got a bit more CS. But it looks like Nocturne is actually still doing what needs to be done. I mean that flank play is was pretty critical for Zoranos yeah. to get back in this one. Still sitting on his ultimate. I'm actually surprised it wasn't used in that fight, but that's a okay. He has teleport. He has you know the paranoia, so he can look to engage pretty much anywhere at the, the gank at top line. Yes, yeah, a gank is happening up top right now. Orn's in a fair bit of trouble. The tornado's not going to connect, but Ustov is still on the hunt. Actually doesn't connect with the slow right there. So Tron, he's a pretty healthy dude. He should be able to escape, even getting hit with that Zephyr. Saves has arrived, so the lane swap is in effect for the University of Sydney. They just got a dragon, so might as well put some pressure on the top side. And a bit of invading as well, getting that vision down. And this is just Sydney. They're playing the map very well, and it's always QUT on the reactive side. As you can see, though, they are starting to react. A lot of red names going down to the bot side, but the dive is on. Bullet time coming through with the elastic slingshot. A redemption is used as well to keep everyone healthy. The monsoon just health bars are not going to fall, and the dive is successful. But on the other side of the map, a tower was taken by QUT. And they trade the tower top lane. Really good play by Yusid there, knowing their, knowing their damage, knowing what they can and can't do. Um, bot lane looks like they're going for a gank in on this uh, on this Nocturne. Yeah, it could be a dive on Zoranos Never right mind. now. Janet was looking for a way in. There's just still a lot of tower pressure, and it's almost like a base race happening right here. Yeah, you've got QT committing to the bot lane while you have Usid committing top lane, and currently Usid is winning. Well, I mean, it's because they killed Tron, right? So yeah. Zoranos has a little bit of extra wave clear. That said, they will be giving up towers on both sides, and... Yeah, interesting little base race situation. However, this is a big difference because you, Sydney, they're rotating the mid lane. They're trying to find Little Sumo. They won't find him, but they will find that mid tower. Yeah, and the problem that QT is going to face now is because they've lost their top tier 2 and their mid tier 1, it's going to be really hard for them to turtle that that lane. So they've, they're, they've pretty much lost control of their red side, if need be, because they have, no, they have no safe lanes at the moment. If they can crack that tier 2 tower mid, um, Usid is in a great position where they pretty much have a three jungle advantage. Yeah, absolutely, as you can see. You know, more Rift Herald pressure being put right here. Tron, it's going to be a risky play. I don't know if he's going to go for that steal, but he is stepping forward, and this could be turned around quite disastrously for one side. The call of the Forge God is there. The tornado was a little slow, and he flashed into it! Forward with some very backwards thinking right there. Is in a lot of trouble. Still on the run. Udisoft is hit as well by the True Shot Barrage. The final chapter, though, hits Zack. Does not hit the Jenna. And Udisoft might be going down. A good kick back to the rest of the fight. The Zacklets are out, but they will easily get picked up. And that kill will actually go to Troll the Palm. They don't give it to AZ, but... That flash! What was that? Yeah, I don't know. That was not a forehead, a forehead play by the Jana. Unfortunately there, I think thinking it was going to go top tries to catch around and flashes into it really lucky not to get completely de like demolished there uh, because that could have been really bad those are those plays that you see 
on on like you know live stream fails and you know oh. that would never happen in a real game and yet it happened and i don't know how it happened but you know really unfortunate really unfortunate unfortunate but also lucky because for some reason it worked oh no did it Ubisoft still died. He died yeah, for his support forward, sins. But, but forward lived. So, like, that's all that matters. Support I, is the only lane that matters. Mm, we all know that. We all know if the support lives, the game mm, still won. So, thinking emoji in that one. But at Northern the end, of, Orc. look, tanks exist to die, right? So, I yeah. guess at the end of the day, that is the. Weird. Why would you build ha loads of HP if you don't want to lose it? Mm, that exactly. Is the, so, you know. Really good fight, though. Oh, action actually oh. happening up above as that was a slingshot that did connect on the little sumo. He's on the run right now, but Udisoft's eyes are instead on one Janet. The shockwave was held on to by sumo, but Flash did get used. Yeah, we've got a really interesting fight right now. Is they just? I think they're just going for an, an A-Ram style. I guess they're prepping for Dragon. They're getting ready for that Ocean Drake. Ocean is really strong on both teams right now, especially onto the Cassiopeia and the Ezreal. Mm. I think if they either team really wants that, and that's why they're committing so much to this fight. Uh, we do have the Nocturne uh, split pushing top lane potentially, trying to get that tier that inhibitor turret uh, if they don't respect him and pull back. Um, and still has the TP up, so could always TP into the fight if need be. Yeah, but I think like he's looking at inhibitors at this stage. Dragon has been started. Rasan perhaps is going to be looking for that flank play, but Rift Herald's dropped as well, and you can see the teleport coming through. And we are seeing that play down here. The slingshot comes through, but it's not enough to steal the dragon. Shockwave is there trying to throw things around. The parallel gaze misses completely, but it doesn't matter because Sydney is just running straight over the top. A triple kill, in fact, a quadra, in fact, for Zoranos. He Penta. could be looking for that Penta at yeah. the end of the day. No, he does not get it. It goes stolen away by one Rasan, but a huge fight for the University of Sydney. Zoran is being a massive team player there, not yelling in the, in the chat, give me Penta, give me Penta, knowing that his team, you know, it's better for them to just get the kill and move on. They dropped the Rift Herald mid lane, so that's been passive pushing into the oh lane. Oh my gosh. And the top, a really smart play. Did you see the damage? Watch the damage coming out of him as soon as he gets in. Boom. Yeah, I mean, it was all that Nocturne right there. The Petrifying Gaze did do the damage. It didn't get the stuns, but that's A-OK. -okay. It was just that one empowered auto of just cleaning up everything at the back of that coming from Rasan. Yeah, forward died. OK, that's great. Still was a, you know, complete ace. Mid lane has been blown open because of the decision to drop that Rift Herald there. And the University of Sydney, they were doing great before. Well, they've just completely taken over this game. You have a down in hip. Baron hasn't even spawned yet. Yeah, they were doing great. Now they're doing exceptionally. They've got a 5-1 Nocturne who can pretty much blow up anyone on that team right now. Maybe not the Orn, but with a little bit of time, would can kill that one very quickly. And I don't see really any answers currently from the side of QUT. No one that you you've got the stopwatch on the Oriana, but like no one's really respecting the damage output right now, not going for any defensive items. You know what neither team wants? An ocean soul. No. Every other soul would be better for both of these teams. Yeah, every other soul would be <laughs> infinitely better. The ocean Drake is great mm, for both mm, teams. True. The soul, mm, not so much. I mean, it's not that the soul is bad. I just feel like every other soul would be almost more beneficial, except for maybe Cloud Soul. Except for maybe Cloud Soul. Maybe, maybe not Cloud Soul, but you know, the Infernal Soul, the Mountain, the mountain soul, soul would, would be great, great on Sydney. Yeah, oh. would be great on them. Uh, overall, I think you know, it's it's an okay dragon for them. But I don't think it's going to be a priority. I just feel like we're getting bad Dragon Souls today. That seems to be the theme as Rysan could be in a bit of trouble. Has that vision, was able to see Janet, and no, nope, we'll play it safe. And Janet's probably aware that, hey, there could be people around here. In fact, Udisoft uh, is walking around. I don't think he was actually spotted as, yeah, no. Nope. The kick was going to miss right there. Udisoft, he's going to waste time. They're, they're, everyone knows everyone's around, but they're just too scared to make that commitment. That's fine, though. Sydney has a bigger fish to fry, or in this case, bigger worms. The biggest of worms as Baron might get brought down. QUT looking for a chance to possibly steal this one away. Keep your eyes on Janet. He's going to be going for that miracle play. They should be aware it started. Meanwhile, elsewhere, actually, that's a nice little pickup onto Zorna, so Vision can't be hampered. Rysan has gone around the back. He's going to try to delay as long as possible. Baron low. Call of the Forge Gods there. He's going to try and hit this jack, but he is unable to connect. Janet still looking for that way in. Rysan, he's trying to stop Tron. Baron's low, but the aggro has been stopped for now. Udisoft's actually turning it around onto Janet. Is able to get one, gets the second kill as well. Nope, it's a 1 for 1 at the time. Tron quite low. He should be able to fall, but Lee Sin is out of this fight. Janet needs his life alive. Montoon is going to heal and keep Udisoft kicking. Not going to find that re-engage just yet. Health bar's low. Moving forward. QUT looking for a possible re-engage. It's currently 2 to 
one, I guess, on the kill count, but Zarnos is back up, does not have teleport. That is a tornado. It's going to connect with Tron. University of Sydney, they're running towards the wrong base at this size. As you can see, Entropic, he's actually not on target, but the slingshot does not connect, and he's going to quickly get out that one, but Tron, he's up in the front line. He might get cut down, saves, finds one fighting from the backside. AZ is the next target, and he is made to rain. Slowed by that. Here comes the slingshot, does not connect. AZ continuing to kite back. Meanwhile, look below. Here comes Zarnos. He's jumping in, does so much damage, but cannot quite get that kill on to Entropic. He is on the run. Meanwhile, Saves is able to find one, and somehow Udisoft was able to stay alive. QUT now on the run. They're on the right side of the map, and I think that ends the extended fight. I think that's going to end the extended fight for the moment. I am questioning, though, why Yusid just didn't go for the Baron there. They had it down to 1300 HP. I get they didn't want a the potential Lee Sin steal, but at that point, just go for the 50-50. If you can lock him out like they were doing, you have a very good chance of just being able to take it. So I think it's kind of bizarre that they didn't take it there and really unfortunate because like we saw, at the end of the day, that extended fight turned out well for them. So if they could have got that Baron there as well, this would have been an exceptional position for them to be. I mean, it could have been game over potentially, but at the same time though, giving Baron 2 QUT can open that door for the side to fight back in it. And I think Sydney, they'd rather win the game than potentially lose it in this stage. And like, why risk that in that situation where it's like, okay, we're still in control of the map, at the end of all that, we can still pretty much take Baron wherever we want. Let's try and force a situation where the odds are even better in our favor because there's no real pressure coming back us at the moment. Yeah, no, like that's the reason for it, 100%. And it also means they can now prioritize the dragon and not have to trade either or. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I definitely think it was a moment of they would, they didn't want to risk it. Yeah, and they could have. Because it was, it was a risk versus reward. The reward was they got Baron and, and ended they the, game. the game. The risk was they don't get Baron and potentially lose a win, a lo like an unlosable game. Exactly. So, at this stage, moving forward, University of Sydney, they've gotten a third dragon, and unfortunately, because of the new dragons, they can't really complete the Captain Planet of dragons and get all four of the elements. Heart doesn't exist. Um, that, that kid was just there to tag along. That's how Captain Planet worked. That's how Odis it worked. Odisoft not caught out right there. He's going to swing thing shot away. What's that kid's name? Is like... What's his oh name? God, I don't know. It's like remember. it was the kid from Brazil. I, I don't remember what that. It was the South American kid. Yeah. Oh. Something to keep note of as well is you've got the two. Well, the, uh, at least one split pusher now. As Cassiopeia was split pushing, uh, as everyone's grouping around that Baron trying to fight that, while you've got the Nocturne doing what Nocturne is doing all game, sitting there taking people away and just putting pressure on the base. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Teleport available for Zarno, so he's going to continue to like push these side lane advantages. No one really wants to 1v1 this Nocturne right now. He will shred them. Just look at the sheer amount of armor pen on that build, and that armor pen turns into tower pen, turns into fearing this uh, Orn, although Tron the Palm is actually quite tanky, so it's going to take a long time to cut him down, and during that time, it does mean QUT can rotate, and they're looking for a potential pick onto Zornos right here. Zornos is aware he's probably going to go down, drops the ultimate, but will eventually follow. Will he? Nice flash over the wall, but the call of the Forge God tramples this spirit on on the other side of the map, however, it does look as if Baron had been started. True Shot Barrage attempting the steal. It's a little too early. Meanwhile, Rasan again trying to zone away, hit by the Shockwave, but Baron's already gone, and Rasan is winning the 2v1. Has already taken out Janet, and Sumo is just getting chunked by those Twin Fangs. A double kill from Rasan in the 2v1, and QUT, they're actually running away. They want to stay away from this Cassiopeia, but they might have no choice. Nope, Udisoft is going to get the Raptors instead. You know, that's actually really scary what just happened because potentially like we were saying like oh maybe I, I said why didn't they take it Udisoft missmited the ch the baron there mm -hmm. that was a potential if that was a 50 50 he would have lost that but so quite potentially as it stands though baron does fall inhibitors are next of all qut they've got death timers you know 13 seconds till sumo is back uh, four seconds till jan is back although that shockwave won't be available for a bit longer and with those baron empowered minions in the base university of sydney they're trying to put that chokehold on they're trying to finish this game they'll get at least two inhibitors off this push and they might look for more i mean a nexus tower has already fallen teleports are coming in and it's time perhaps for sydney to end this game elastic slingshot does not connect on anyone and Udisoft immediately is getting blown up on the backside. Here comes that final chapter, but it's not going to find anyone. And Zornos actually doing a considerable amount of damage. It gets the kill onto Janet. Bullet time forces the rest of QUT back into the fountain as Sydney takes that second Nexus Tower. A big tornado is continuing to hold QUT back, and more and more damage gets put on that Nexus. Rasan, he's being chased back, but he's looking for that re-engage. Tron the Bomb tries to get to the back line, but Udisov is up running away, goes in, and almost takes off RZ. University of Sydney, they drop them on through. They're looking for kills. They won't get any, but they get the Nexus instead. GG, you, Sid.